Uh, looking to 2014 and beyond, and why I'm hopeful about that, uh, there are many reasons. Uh, first and foremost, we have uh, gained tremendously uh, in terms of you know, uh, development in Afghanistan, if it's social, if it's economic, if it's political. But Afghanistan came a long way after 2001 to 2013. And I think these gains are not limited to one sector. And you can even not, uh, I mean, uh, compare Afghanistan today with Afghanistan 2001. And the gain which has uh, made jointly uh, by the Afghan government, by Afghan people and in international community, uh, I think uh, these, they, there are assurances as well that those gain will remain and will be secured. Uh, 352,000 strong Afghan National Army and police. Uh, and also uh, the, 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 the future commitment of international community, particularly NATO and its allies, uh, for the new NATO training mission, training, advising, and assistance mission under the name of uh, uh, Resolute Support Mission in Afghanistan. It's yet another commitment of international community that Afghanistan will not be abandoned. And uh, we have also witnessed uh, that in major skills, the international community in Bonn Conference, Bonn II, in Chicago and NATO, uh, uh, Chicago NATO summit, and also in uh, in Tokyo uh, conference, they have pledged themselves to support Afghanistan through the decade of transformation, which is from 2014 to 2024. So we do have this uh, international assurance. We do have strong Afghan national security forces, and we do have the capacity which has been uh, grown up, built in the last one decade. A good example is that. 10.5 million Afghan uh, are going to school, colleges, and universities. It is making one third of the population, which was not the case uh, throughout the history of this country. It is unprecedentedly uh, huge development uh, in the history of Afghanistan. I mean, in terms of technology, 18 million people around Afghanistan, which is more than half of population, they have cell phones, and nearly every single person in Afghanistan has access to communication through cell phones, and a huge amount of Afghans are using uh, modern technology, internet, and, and, and other social media to communicate. And meanwhile, we do have uh, institutions, we do have constitution. Uh, the institutions which have been built the, the constitution, the laws, the procedures, and strategies for Afghanistan in the past and for the future of this country, which includes Afghan national development strategies, uh, which includes Afghanistan's constitution, which includes election law, uh, which includes many other laws uh, which assure uh, that country, that Afghanistan will never go back to the dark era of 2001 and beyond. Uh, so I'm sure and confident that the gains are solid, and it will remain. Uh, but what we need to do uh, to, to, to secure these achievements and to build on and to continue these achievements, uh, of course, we shouldn't really uh, you know, sleep by having this idea or get lazy that the gains are tremendous and we shouldn't move farther. Of course, we should move farther and, and, and should move towards uh, self-sustainability, uh, towards uh, a sovereign Afghanistan and towards a country uh, which should be peaceful and also a country prosper and develop. Uh, what are the challenges that uh, faces uh, younger generation of Afghanistan? Uh, while we talk about the younger generation of Afghanistan, uh, I mean, we can include, uh, include the, 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 the under youth, those who are part of the society and hugely related and linked or interlinked to the youth community in Afghanistan. Uh, surveys research shows that Afghanistan has population of under uh, 70 percent under 25 years of age. So it shows that a uh, huge amount of uh, population uh, are young in Afghanistan. Uh, also, according to the life, life uh, expectancy index, uh, actually Afghanistan is one of the fourth countries uh, among the fourth countries that uh, has the lowest life expectancy. Uh, however, it has grown from 42, uh, 41 to uh, 50. Still, many Afghan people means they are dying under the age of 50. So the youth in Afghanistan uh, are not similar to the youth 
uh, whether many European and Eastern or, or Asian countries, they have lots of responsibilities uh, and, and they have a lot of tasks, not only for themselves, but for their family, for their uh, society. They're not, they're, they're not like the other youth uh, across the globe to have the opportunity to play games, play Xbox, or uh, play sports. But despite all these issues, they have gained tremendously in, in these aspects. I mean, uh, if you talk about sports in Afghanistan, Afghan youth um, made it possible uh, to win the, f the, the first ever two Olympic medals since 2005. And also, Afghan youth has managed to, to, to get to the uh, South Asia Football Cup, Soccer Cup, and they, 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 they own the cup. And they are qualified for 2015 uh, Cricket World Cup. So these are tremendous achievements that Afghan youth uh, uh, gained in the last one decade. But the challenges they are facing, it's uh, not only specifically for the youth, it's, it's shared by everybody. One of the biggest and major challenge for the Afghan youth, it's uh, corruption, it's nepotism which directly feeds to the unemployment, which feeds to the uh, insecurity of Afghanistan, which feeds to drug cultivation, drug trafficking, and which feeds to also uh, injustice in Afghanistan. So I think many Afghan youth, including men and women, are suffering because of corruption, no matter if it's uh, if it's service delivery, if it's education, if it's sports, in every aspect, if you see that Afghan, if it's unemployment or if it's not fair employment, balanced employment, uh, these are all related to corruption issues. Uh, but besides these issues, uh, I think security is also uh, one of the major challenge, which is not only for the youth, but for the entire population of Afghanistan. So these are the major challenges that Afghan youth faces. Uh, what role the uh, Young Leader Initiative member can play in the future of Afghanistan? Uh, as I have mentioned before, the role of the youth in Afghanistan is completely different from the role of the youth across the globe. They are not the future of this country, but they are the presence of this country. They are contributing to, to, to the society tremendously. And most of the time, I oppose with my elders, I oppose with senior politicians when they call us, you are the future of your country. It makes you lazy. I mean, uh, it gives you a, a sense that you cannot do anything now, but you have to be prepared for the future. But I would say, no, I'm the presence of this country. And my fellows, young generation, are the presence of this country. No matter if they're serving in the front line with the ANSF, no matter if they're working with the government, uh, with the agencies. And this is what I have learned about the Asia society, which is unique, uh, that, that the people who, who are in this fellowship uh, for 2013, they are coming from very diverse background. They are, they are working in the policy level. Everybody I met in this fellowship, they are policy maker in their institution, in the society, or they are directly contributing to the future and current policy of the government and even the policies of international community. So this is very unique about the uh, Asia Society uh, 21 uh, Young Leader Initiative, uh, where you, 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 you visit, you meet, and, and, and uh, you make friendship with the people that they are uh, very few in terms of the number, but they are very influential, they are very dedicated, committed, well-educated, well-experienced leaders in the society and community. They are not waiting for the future to contribute for their, uh, for their country, but they are engaged right now at all levels. The, besides the huge responsibilities they have as, as a head of their organizations, as a directors, as a policy uh, advisors, in many other uh, positions, as a captain, whatever, they're also social volunteer, which also shows their dedication, uh, that uh, they, they, they spend their time, even spend their free times, uh, weekends for volunteerism to contribute to their society. A better sign that for, for, for their dedication and volunt for volunteerism is to be a member of uh, Asia society, uh, which requires lots of dedication, lots of working in your free times. So it means they're cutting their, their time for rest, relax, and enjoyment in serving for their people and for, their, uh, for the human being and humankind.